Great to be back. Thanks for uh, rejoining me here. We're in Matthew chapter 13, and we are looking at the parable of the treasure hidden in the field and also the subsequent parallel parable, the parable of uh, the pearl of great price. Okay, now we were in the middle of the story of the treasure hidden in the field from last time. I'm not going to uh, review so much. Everybody, I think, pretty well knows the parable, but the the, the buyer who's who's the only one who knows the real value of the field has just sealed the deal with the bewildered owner. Why is this guy so motivated you know, to pay whatever, four times we said the price uh, of a going rate per acre for field? The man runs home, tells his wife, I'm so excited, honey. We have the potential to become mega rich here uh, with a business deal that is mind blowing. He, he tells her about the field and tells her about the treasure hidden in the field. And so they begin to think of how can we possibly come up with that amount of money? We're not wealthy people ourselves. Uh, let's see, if we sell our house, if we sell our field, uh, if we sell the cows, if we sell the horses, you know, and who knows all that they wind up having to sell, but they, uh, according to Jesus, they sell everything to buy the field. So their neighbors are watching, you know, incredulously thinking to themselves, what has gotten in to our friend here? These so motivated to buy this silly field. I mean, it's not worth more than any other field in the area, and he's paying four times the rate. What a fool. They're all talking about what a fool he and his wife are. Well, the day of the closing comes, you know, however they did it back in those days. There may be a document signed, witnesses and so forth. The money is exchanged. Here's this man and his wife who have sold everything they have, handing it all over to buy this field that's worth one-fourth as much as what they're paying in everybody else's mind. Not worth that at all. A foolish deal on his part, shaking the hand, signing the deed or whatever, and the man walking off. Uh, with a huge smile on his face with, his face with his wife in his arm saying, we have just made the wisest move of our lives. While well, everyone else has a, you know, an opinion that's the exact opposite. Universally, everyone else is saying, you are fools. But who gets the last laugh? Well, when it comes time uh, for, for, for him to go dig that treasure out and reveal what that field was really worth, then everybody knows, oh my goodness, we thought he was a fool, but he was really the wise one. And aren't we envious of him? Wish we were in his shoes. Well, Jesus said that's what the kingdom of heaven is like. People right now are looking at those of us who re recognize the value of what we have and saying, you're all just a bunch of fools. Look what you've given up. You're denying yourself all these things. We're saying, ha, 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 what little bit we've given up. You know, the, little, the, the present sufferings that we are enduring are of no comparison to the eternal weight of glory that we're anticipating waiting for us in God's kingdom. Okay, because we have in heaven, as Paul wrote to Timothy, a, 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 an inheritance that is impossible perishable and undefiled and will not fade away. Praise God. Okay, so rejoice. If you're a believer in Jesus, you have found the treasure in the field. And it seems that the disciples understood that at that point in time. Jesus, a few seconds later, asked them if they understand, and they say yes. And you can see that the parable of the pearl of great price is very similar. This is a typical uh, teaching method of the rabbis in Jesus' day. Two examples, one point. And sa same case here, a guy finds one pearl that is exceedingly rare and valuable, and so he sells everything he can to get that one pearl because he, uh, unlike the average commoner, doesn't understand how one pearl could have so much value, but he's the expert. He's really the knowledgeable one. Other people would say, you know, what a nut to sell everything in order to get this one pearl. But he realizes he's not losing anything. He's ultimately gaining everything. And so in reality, although I have said, yes, it does cost to serve God. In reality, it doesn't cost anything. It pays to serve God. Okay, now let me share with you in the short time that I've got remaining, there is uh, one alternate uh, understanding of uh, these two parables. I don't agree with this alternate understanding. I'm gonna throw it out just for your sake, uh, just so you know it and maybe you be prepared if you do hear it. Some say that the treasure in the field and the pearl of great price uh, is not the kingdom of heaven, it's 
us, it's me, it's you. And uh, the, the, the person who sells everything to go and buy that field is Jesus who gave up his life in order to get us. Oh, lucky Jesus, he gets us. Huh, I'm not so sure I like that interpretation. It seems like it's uh, a little bit uh, of a reversal of my understanding of um, you know what's really valuable. I never looked at Jesus as lucky and blessed to get me. Uh, to be honest with you, I look at myself as supremely blessed. And so I, I'm not ever going to claim that I'm the pearl <sighs> of great price or that I am the treasure hidden in the field. That seems to exalt um, you know, us a little bit too highly, okay? Um, people say, well, wait, no, it has to mean that because we don't have to give up anything to gain Jesus. Well, um, where do you get that? I mean, uh, although eternal life is a free gift from God, those who receive that free gift often pay a price for it, not a price to God. They're not saying, okay, God, here, let me shell it out. Here's what I'm paying you. No, but they pay a personal price uh, just in their lives because of the fact that now they become children and servants of God. Can I ask you the question, has following Jesus Christ, if you are following him, has it cost you anything? Is there any price that you have had to pay? Is there anything that you've lost? Now again, it's nothing in comparison to what you've gained, but you see the Apostle Paul talked about all the things that he lost, but he said it's just like dung in comparison to what I have gained. Okay, so that's how we should look at it too. But I think experience tells us, I think the rest of the context of scripture tells us that these parables uh, don't represent Jesus uh, finding us, they represent us finding him. Okay, he's worth us giving up everything to gain him. All right, well, there's another parable coming up, a very interesting parable, and there's some insights into it that I just can't wait to share with you. So please stay with me and I'll see you next time.